Hey guys, Karen here and welcome to another episode of Fred and the Nesta TV. This week I'm in Fez in Morocco and you can see the tanning pits behind me. These pits have urine and pigeon poo in them and the, the animal pelts kind of marinate and then get dyed and uh, all the work gets done to them here. <laughs> <laughs> until they get turned into all the leather products that you see out on the street. So the theme of today is, look, this is the third in the series of, you know, getting started and being an outcome-driven investor. So the first one, we've looked at why you're investing. The second one, we've figured out who you want to be, what you want to do, and what you want to have. So this week, we're going to break that down into smaller, actionable steps. Hey guys, Tyron here and welcome to London, the east coast of Copenhagen, the Netherlands and I am coming to you from Vilnius. Uh, we're in Cordoba now and this is Freedom Investor TV. So throughout the previous videos we've looked at why you're investing and what your ultimate goal of achieving is and then we've also looked at how you want to be, do and have within the immediate future, but also, another horse, yep, uh, but also we've looked at two different strategies that you might take in order to get there. The first being buying and holding, and the second being trading. So whichever strategy you do take, you're going to need to break them down into actionable steps. So. How does that look? Look, let's take a 10 year goal. Let's say you want to achieve $100,000 in passive income. Now there's two ways that you could do that. The first is to start buying properties which have some cash flow each week and then you can start to accumulate those properties building up your passive cash flow over time. Now the second way is to accumulate a lump sum of a lump sum of cash for doing profit deals and then put that money into high yielding properties for example commercial or maybe apartments or anything that has a very high yielding property and, and own it debt free. So whichever of these strategies you're going to take it needs to be broken down into small actionable steps. So, for example, if we were to take the first option of doing lump sum profit deals and trying to get to a million, then of trying. You gotta watch out for the horses in this. You know the traffic jams in this part of the world. Uh, so. If we were aiming for the, the second option, which is to build up the lump sum and then convert that to cash flow, then how would that look? Well, let's say you're aiming for $100,000 in passive cash flow. Well, the first thing you're going to do is equate that to a yield. So if you could buy 10% yielding properties, then if you can buy 10% yielding properties, then that equates to a million dollars in cash that you need or a million dollars worth of debt free property because a million dollars at 10% net, net yield equals $100,000 cash flow. So how do you do that? Well you can break your million dollars up into the number of years you want to invest over. So if you want to do that over 10 years that's $100,000 per year. You can then that break that down into the number of deals you need to do in order to make that $100,000. So for example, if you were to... So for example, if you were to know that you could make $50,000 out of a deal, then that's only two deals. If you were to know that you could only make $10,000 out of a deal, then that would be 10 deals. So for example, you break that down and then that's going to give you the number of deals and the amount of profit you need to make from each deal every year so that you only have to focus on achieving that. Now the other way around is to buy, hold and accumulate the number of properties. That's a little bit harder, but if you were to break that down again, then you would be able to do it the same way. So let's say you want to make $100,000 per year, break that down over 10 years, that's $10,000 each year, and then break that down per property. 
So $10,000 a year, how many properties are you going to need to achieve $10,000 per year? Figure out how much it is per month, which is roughly just under just under a thousand dollars per month and then break that down into how many properties and per week so for example it'd be normal to be able to find an extra hundred dollars passive cash flow per week depending on where you are in the world and so if you can figure out how many of these you've got to buy and accumulate then you know that over time you're going to have that build up the rents are going to increase, your debt is going to decrease, which is going to increase your cash flow anyway, and after time you're going to achieve this. Now, the strategy I suggest you do is to kind of do a mix of both. Start accumulating passive cash flow properties, because even if you're only getting, say, $5,000 per year to start with, that's better than nothing. Go out, with your spare time, do some deals, which is going to give you the money to either pay off debt or buy more properties. <clears throat> so the most important thing to take out of today is to be able to work your steps backwards in order to be able to break them down into small actionable steps that you can do today to know how many different deals it's going to take to get you to that ultimate goal. So I'm going to catch you next week. That's all from Fez and that's all from Fez and I'll see you next week. Bye. I can't get a mortgage. I'm in Holland, I don't earn euros, I don't have a proper residency here, so I can't actually get a mortgage. But what I can do is I can control a property. When we bail, when we fail, when we make mistakes, it's because we're trying something new. I mean, think about the first time you ever rode a bike. You fell over a lot, 